I wish to address my anti cirque uh, commentaries, commentators on the internet and my YouTube site. I came last night from the circumcision of the second twin born to my son Yitzhak, Rabbi Yitzhak of Oak Park, Illinois. And I wish to address the same issue, but perhaps from a different angle. The children were born on the night of Passover. They were preemies, and they had to stay in the hospital for several weeks before they could come home. And finally, a month, a month and a week after they were born, they finally were able to be circumcised and named as Jewish children. And this was a time of great celebration. And for those of you out there, you cannot imagine how a circumcision becomes a celebration. Because to you, a circumcision is mutilation of the genitalia. Because through circumcision, sexual pleasure is somehow diminished, whether it's true or not. I mean, there are some Jewish commentaries who state that, but in fact, there was an extensive test with many thousands of respondents, and no appreciable difference could be discerned between the circumcised and uncircumcised males regarding their sexual activity and pleasure. But even if it were, what exactly is the reason why we enjoy coming to a bris, to a circumcision? Circumcision reflects our belief that we are a chosen people, that despite having to face the challenges of the world, despite being scorned by world leadership, despite being hated for our success, being vilified due to jealousy and a lack of understanding, that despite all of this, we remain faithful to our God and to our people, and as such, we remain faithful citizens under the government under which we live. And the circumcision is a sign to us of a covenant, a sign that we belong to God despite having to undergo pain. And as such, we commit ourselves to serving God and worshiping God under all circumstances. And we also commit ourselves to loving each other and loving all of God's creatures and respecting those who respect God's laws. And so a circumcised male understands the concept of a covenant that we have to give something up in order to take our place in society. It's not enough to be a member of society, but we have to put something in. We don't have to take. We have to be givers and not takers. We have to be willing to sacrifice, whether it's our resources, our time, our money, our love, our body, or our life. There is a higher goal for which we dedicate our lives. You know, some of the greatest Americans, in fact, the greatest Americans of the country are those who serve in the armed forces because it is through their office that all of the rights and privileges of this great country and this great society can endure. And sometimes these young men and women are asked to give up their most precious elements, their bodies and their lives. And you read the episodes of young people who despite being injured once and twice and again 
re-enlist for the same project, for going to Iran, for going to Afghanistan, because they want to make a difference. They understand the concept of the covenant, and so do all the Jewish people who are circumcised. Do you 